All right, friends, let's learn what we always learn at the end of a chapter is how do you solve equations that involve what we're studying and we're currently studying rational equations. So rational, remember, means you have a fraction and you can't have the bottom be zero. So you have to check your answers. Um, what I do to kind of preemptively strike is I just decide from the beginning what will make the denominator zero because the denominator can't be zero. So if I rule out numbers that are going to make the denominator zero right from the beginning, then I don't have to check my answers. And when we get to that, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Those numbers that you get as answers but can't use are called extraneous solutions. And so they don't really count as an answer because you can't use them because they make the bottom zero. So these are going to be any x values that you get that make the bottom zero. And you can't have the bottom be zero since like forever, beginning of time. Okay, so first of all, when there's no adding or subtracting in the problem like one fraction plus another, so you simply have one fraction equal to the other, we're just going to do cross products, like cross multiplying, like you've done since, you know, I don't know when, middle school. So 5 times x in this problem has to equal 6 times 12. Now, wouldn't it be nice if this is what we're doing, but it's not what we're doing. We're going to do this using rational expressions. This was what we've done in the past just to show you that the skills and the process is still the same. Now, this one can't have anything that would make the bottom 0 because the bottom's 5 and 12. So there's no way to make that zero. Here, what I do is I right away look and I go, okay, what would make this bottom equal zero? And the answer is negative one. So that's going to be one of the answers I can't get, even if I get it. I can't use it as a real answer. Then I look about at this other part and think, what's going to make 4x plus 1 equal zero? So I'll take away the 1. I'll divide by 4. And so that's the other number that x can't be. So if I get one of those answers, they're going to be considered extraneous. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the problem, and I'm going to cross multiply. You have done this before too in Algebra 1. I'm going to multiply these two, and then this diagonal. That is going to require me to distribute the 9 here and the 3 here. Now I'm going to be thinking back to Algebra 1, and I want all the x's on one side, so I can move them kind of whichever way I want. It doesn't matter. Now I have 9 equals 3x plus 3. I take that away. I have 3x is going to equal 6. When I divide by 3, I get that x is 2. I look up here. It's not pro a problem. I didn't get this number and I didn't get this number, so I'm good to go. That way I don't have to check my answers. I just look and see if it's one of the numbers that I cannot use. Okay, so let's keep going. Now this one's going to get messier because I'm going to be taking 4 times 3, which is easy, but here I'm going to be taking x plus 1, so this is going to be a lot of skills we've already used. So in this problem, I'm going to need to FOIL. Now, I can't have the bottom be 0. 4 can't be 0, so that doesn't concern me. But when will x minus 3 equal 0? That will happen if x is 3, so that's going to be a number that I cannot use, even if I get it as an answer. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do what you got to do here, which is going to be foiling. This will be 12. This will be first, outside, inside, last. And then like normal with foiling, these two are alike, so they'll go together. And now we have a quadratic. Quadratic meaning an x squared and an x. And I have to solve that by factoring or with a quadratic formula. The ones we're doing right now will factor. But in order to solve it, it has to be equal to 0. So I take the 12 away. And now you're going to look to your blue card or whatever color your teacher's card is. So my kids, it's a blue card. I'm going to multiply these two together or these two. Those are my choices. I needed to subtract to be 2, so I'm going to use 3 and 5. And when I use 3 and 5, I have to figure out how to make a negative 2, so I'll do negative 2 and a positive 3. The question is what makes them 0? The 
x plus 3 will be 0 at negative 3, and x minus 5 will be 0 at positive 5. We're going to take a little whack on my doggo because she's downstairs barking to go out. So these are my two potential answers. But I look up here, and I can't let x equal 3, but I didn't get 3. I got negative 3. So both of my answers are legitimate and usable, and I can keep them both. So it's not super common, honestly, to have um, extraneous solutions, so you don't have to worry about getting them every time, but you can get them, and so you want to watch for them. So I'm going to do this one in a different color just so you can see it better, hopefully. Before I start, I'm going to take this bottom, and I'm going to set it equal to 0. I'll have to take away 5 and divide by 2. So if I get a negative 5 over 2 later, I won't be able to use it because that makes the bottom 0. Over here, 11x plus 8 will equal 0 if I'm going to take that negative 8 over and divide by 11. Okay, well, those are gross numbers. But if I get either one of those numbers, I'm going to have to say that doesn't really work because it makes me take... Um, have a zero on the bottom. So let's cross multiply. This one's not terrible because it's just one times that, so it just stays 11x plus 8. This one is also not terrible, but it's different than we've seen. I don't have to FOIL. I just have to distribute an x. When I do, I get 2x squared plus 5x. So I'm going to need to factor most of the time that I have an x squared, but to do that, it needs to be equal to zero. So I have to move everything that's over here to the other side by subtraction so that these can this side can be zero. Then I have 2x squared. This gives me minus 6x minus 8. Now I'm looking to factor, and this one actually has a GCF of 2. So when I take that out, it makes it easier to factor because now I'm going to need 4 in a way that subtracts to be 3. And my options are 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. So the one that subtracts to be 3 will be 1 times 4. To get a negative 3, I need a minus 4 plus 1. When will that be 0? Well, 2 can never be 0. This will be 0 if x equals negative 1. And this will be 0 if x is positive 4. And then when I look back up here, neither one of those numbers is going to make the bottom 0. So both of them are legitimate keepers. And I'm good to go. All right. Onward. Let's take a look at the bottoms again. Whoa. So the bottom of this one x minus 1 will equal 0 when x is 1. So that is going to be a number that if I get, I can't use. Over here, this one's a little trickier because x squared minus x will equal 0. I have to factor out an x. And if x is 1, which we already knew was excluded, I'd get a 0 on the bottom. But here, I can't also use 0 because if x is 0, I'll get a 0 on the bottom. All right, those are my excluded values. So when I go to do my problem, if I get any of those, then I have to eliminate them. So this is going to get multiplied by 1, so it'll just stay the same. And this is going to get multiplied by 2, so I'll have to distribute. So I've got this going on. And then when I distribute my two, I've got that. This is all solving an algebra that we've done over and over, so hopefully it's not too terrible. Now I want my x squared to stay positive, but I have to move this and this over in order to have zero on the right. So when I move that over, I made that pretty messy. Let me see if I can do that in two steps to make it clearer. So if I move over the two x by subtraction, I'll have x squared minus 3x, but on this side, I'll still have a minus 2. So I'll need to add that over. So now I have x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. 
The only way to make two is one times two, and that does add up to three, so I can factor this out. I'll do one times two, and in order for them to be a negative three, they'll both have to be negative. So all this factoring and solving was from chapter four, but if you really struggled with it then, obviously it's still a challenge now. In order for this one to be zero, x would have to be positive one. And in order for x minus two to be zero, x would have to be a positive two. But we finally had one. Up here, I had excluded one. You can't use it. In fact, we excluded it twice. So this is not a legitimate answer. It's what we call extraneous. It's like an extra one that we can't really use mathematically. So if you're doing this on a quiz, you're gonna be having all the work shown and you're gonna see that answer but you're gonna cross it off like I did, and this is gonna be the only legitimate usable X value that works. Okay, so we're gonna get my dog to come inside because she's digging a hole. Dolly, get inside. Then we're gonna go upstairs and do this last problem with the calculator. You are a naughty pet. Yes, you're cute though, let's go. Okay, so the next one is a word problem, strikes fear in everybody's hearts, but you have to remember that whenever you have a word problem, it's going to be using the same math that we've been doing on the whole entire thing. Dolly just ran into me, and now the iPad is sideways. When you become an adult, never get a puppy. Okay, we're back. So... I'm trying to get my calculator, sorry. All right, so a company wants to use a 3D printer to make small models of engine components. The printer costs $24,000 and the materials per model, like each model are 300. So this is gonna be the B or my starting amount and this is gonna be like the slope or my rate of change because it's per model. So write an equation that gives the average cost. Okay, so when you do the average, you always do the total divided by the number of items. Okay, well, in our case, the total, they want the average cost. So we need to find the total cost divided by, it says average cost per model. Alrighty. Well, we don't know how many models there are, so the models is going to be, the number of models is going to be our X. So we're doing the total cost divided by the number of models, but the number of models is unknown, so that's going to be an X. Now, for the total cost, it's going to be the $24,000 that you have to pay just for the materials, plus you pay $300 per model. So I'm going to write this down here where I have more room. My average cost is gonna be my total cost. So that's $24,000 for the startup materials plus 300 per model over the number of models. That's gonna be the average cost per model. That's the equation. But then the second one says how many models, meaning X, must be printed for the average cost to be $700. So now I'm going to have $700 equals this. And now Dolly's going to play with a squeaky toy. Now, we've been doing cross multiplying. So to me, it makes sense that I'm going to do this with cross multiplying. So I'm going to think of the 700 as being over 1. Then I'll have 1 times 24,000 plus 300x equals 700 times x. And now Dolly's digging at the floor. Uh, I'm gonna move this over. It's crazy hour here, apparently. I'm gonna have 24,000, 700 minus 300 is 400X. And I know these are big numbers, but you're still just solving, like you did in Algebra 1. So the only thing that's kind of new and tricky is this and this, setting it up as a ratio and cross multiplying. Now we always have to divide by the number attached to x, so we're gonna do that. And when we do that, we end up with x equals 60, and that's representing the number of models we can make in order to have an average cost of 700. So these are all cross multiplying. Tomorrow we'll dig in a little deeper, but when you have one fraction equals the other, you're gonna do cross multiplying, 
And then this whole business of the extraneous solution is something that makes them different than normal cross-multiplying. Hope that helps. Bye.